Hello and welcome everyone and on today's live show our normal catch up on news around the Pico, Pico 2, RP2040, RP2350 and anything else really that catches my eye as I think of interesting. Um, of course we'll talk about the projects that I'm working on and anything else I've seen. Um, and this is a live stream though where I can share a bit more behind the scenes of what's going on and I'll share a little bit more about my challenges with the channel and where I'm taking it and where we're going at the moment. Um, so hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, IoT, robotics and other fun tech. Welcome to my channel. So this is a live stream. It's a more relaxed, um, more relaxed world of, of the Pico and, and uh, my broadcast. Um, an inside of view on the channel and a bit more interactive. So an opportunity for me to ask that, where are you guys? Uh, tell me, tell me, you know, use a chat service, uh, get back to me, tell me what's going on in your world. Where are you? Um, I'm in the UK uh, on a grey and slightly miserable Sunday afternoon. Um, you might be somewhere much sunnier and much brighter. Who knows? If it's the first time that you're joining us on the channel, thank you very much for coming. Uh, it's lovely to have you. Um, and if you're returning, even more, thank you for coming back. Um, I appreciate it. Please do like and subscribe. I appreciate all of your thoughts, all of your likes, and you guys being part of my journey. How are you, how are you all doing, guys? Um, I hope keeping well. I hope projects are going well. Um, mine are both been busy with lots of stuff going on recently. Oh, sounds going a little bit weird, I think, from the dials. Hope you can hear me okay. Um, so I, it's October already and we're heading into the end of the year. And um, my mind, because of a broadcast nature and the fact that I try and key up content before the event, is turning towards Christmas and that end of year because I need to get stuff done and, uh, and keep planning in advance. So there's stuff that I'm working on there around Christmas already and I'll tell you a little bit more about that and tease you a little bit more about that um, later in the live stream. Um, what projects are you working on? Um, what's coming up in your world? I'd love to know about it. I'd love to share a little bit more in these uh, about your, your worlds and some of the stuff you're doing. So please do um, lose share. Uh, any co comments or quality, you know, there's the, a chat box Please do hit the chat and put stuff in. Let's make sure I can see the live chat for anyone who's uh, chatting and taking part. So, so what's the agenda for today's show? Well, we're going to have my normal agenda of uh, the Pico News, um, projects, uh, what's going on on the channel, and uh, finally some Q&A as always. Uh, always fun. So if you've got any questions, uh, live questions are also good. Um, uh, please do uh, ask them as we go through. So let's start with the news of what's going on around the world of the Pico and unexciting tech. As At least as I see it, you might see it differently, in which case let me know because it's good to, to have uh, you know similar views and, 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 and share stuff. So I guess the first exciting thing I thought and I saw this month was Pi Moroni uh, coming out with a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled RP2350 board, the Pi Moroni Pico 2 Plus W. Um, this really looks quite exciting because this is you know way ahead of the Pico 2W coming out, which we're hoping around Christmas. Um, it uses the RM2, which is the same Wi-Fi module that the Pico 2W will be using, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, annoyingly, uh, there is no libraries for this, though, as far as I can find. I could find some Python libraries. I can't find any C libraries, and I can't find any specs. So I'm, uh, it's, it looks cool, but it's sort of... I've got a feeling it, it might be something that you put on the shelf and look at rather than do anything with at the moment, uh, which is annoying. Um, but it's interesting to see what's coming. So we wait desperately for the Pico 2W announcement and then perhaps that will explain what this RM2 module is. 
It also opens the question of what is the RM1? Um, and there's been some debate online, and I think the consensus is the RM1 was one of the modules for Wi-Fi on one of the Raspberry Pis, but don't know. Uh, it's, it, it's interesting. Who knows what, how this is working or what this is. So that was the first thing I saw that came out this month that I thought was an interesting news. Uh, second thing was another Raspberry Pi launch uh, for the uh, AI camera. Now, the really cool thing about this is you probably saw that that camera has an RP2040 on it. That is what is running the AI algorithm. Oh, algorithms. So it's then communicating back to the Raspberry Pi over I2C along the same ribbon cable, along with the date, full data of the stream video. Um, so that looks really interesting. So that, that's able to run things like object recognition and tracking algorithms. And uh, my friend Dan from Make Things uh, um, has actually done a video on this and he's demonstrating it out with his companion robot. And it looks quite cool, I must admit. Take a look at his video if you haven't done so already. And I want to, also wanted to uh, call out to um, the, the other worlds of chat and conversation that are available online for us as uh, developers around the Pico ecosystem. So there's Few people have asked me if I'd be interested in setting up a Discord server where we can collaborate a bit more and stuff. And I'm trying to resist going down that route because it's got a lot of admin overhead and a lot of time will be spent in that, which I just don't have with everything else I'm trying to balance. So I am instead want to actually try and champion some of the more successful um, Discord servers out there and uh, groups and actually take part in them and be one of their champions for ho hopefully bringing people in. Um, and Dev Eco is one of those that um, I've uh, had a presence in and been posting some of my content to for, for a while. Um, and uh, yeah, so Dev Eco is based on Discord, though they're rapidly moving in the world of the uh, rest of social too. And they also now have a regular um, weekly catch up for, a, for an hour of face-to-face uh, -face chat with some speakers and experts and show and tells and things. And they, and they were kind enough to invite me along to it. They call it Dev Anon. And uh, this week I was um, went along to their Dev on, uh, Anon uh, session and talked about one of my Halloween projects, which was quite fun. So they got really the insider view of this new uh, project which you haven't seen yet because it's coming up and probably going out next Sunday uh, as a video um, and it's a wave share screen to animate these eyes on a skull which I think was quite cool it's you know it, it's a relatively simple project anyone can get into it um, but uh, yeah I thought it would be fun to, to share and so that that was fun working with them and, and doing that with them um, if you want to look, I've, got, I've actually got the the, uh, the head and the tracking eyes or the moving eyes. Here we here we go. So it's basically just two screens to, which are talking together and doing some clever animation on on the eyes. Um, and I will tell you next week all about how you do that and how easy it is. And it is really really quite easy. So that was that was fun. So if you're looking for a developer um, community online, have a look at DevEco. Um, that's a good place to chat and ask questions and have a bit of fun. So let's go up and tell you about the final bit of exciting or, well, final bit of news or stuff that I came across. Um, the other bit that, you know, of news that I've been struggling my, my way through is, is bugs and they've been bugging me. And um, um, the, one of the bugs that have been bugging me are quite a, a couple that I keep on uh, stumbling across in things, the SDK 200. And that particular one was when I was working with those little screens, because those boards actually have a little bit more flash memory on than, than a traditional Pico. And so you want to actually tell the compiler that you've got a, a more space for it to put your firmware and your images and things. Of course I do. So how do you do that? Well, to do that, 
um, what you, we of course do is set the board in the CMake list file .txt. Well, that's what I've been doing since the first version of the SDK, and, and indeed, um, uh, uh, enough. And uh, since the first version of the SDK, and since we, that really came, all came out, but um, suddenly on SDK two zero zero, it doesn't work. It completely ignores it, and it just focuses on using the. Uh, um, the standard Pico board and just ignores whatever you set the board to in the CMakes list.txt file. Now you can get around this by of course using the minus D command option on CMake and that will work fine to set the board. Um, but it is slightly frustrating and it does sort of break nearly every one of my Pico W projects. So that, that really did annoy me a little bit. But you can actually also get around this by just setting the platform at the same time as you set board within your um, uh, CMake list.txt file. And that does seem to fix the problem, which is something. But yeah, there's a couple of things at the moment that just slow me down and I'm finding and stumbling us across things as we adapt to the new Pico uh, 200 ecosystem and having the 2040 and the 2350 as as platforms. But anyway, those were the news items I came across. Um, what news items did you come across? Is there anything I missed that I should be talking about? If there is, please do let me know. You know, don't just sit there uh, ignoring it. Tell me, tell me what you'd like to hear about and we can make sure that those get included on the channel. Projects. Next on the agenda, what projects have I been working on? Well, you know, you see a lot of the projects, not all of it, but you see a lot of the projects that I work on. So stuff that I have been playing around with uh, in the last uh, month or so have been that RP2040 touch um, uh, uh, display from Waveshare. Um, and I did a, a good um, review uh, session on, on a project on that show or video on that, showing you how that all works giving you really the inside view and my view on that. Um, it's, it is a great little panel, uh, with the exception of SWD not being there. Um, libraries are not bad, but you know, as qu quite commonly, um, the examples are not as easy to get on with as you'd like, and the documentation on the libraries are not quite as good as you would, ex would hope. Um, but that seems to be very common around these hobby modules, to be honest. Um, the other one I looked at was the RP2350 um, and it's SHA256. Um, oh, uh, so hashing algorithm and the fact that it can now do that in hardware and how much faster that is. So we had a little look at the performance of that and it is actually astoundingly quick. But that will come in more useful as we move into having Wi-Fi when that Pico 2W comes around. Also begin to introduce you to my uh, rather big real project of this weather station and the first one of those, just trying to introduce you to some of the hardware. Need to get into talking about the PCB next, which will be coming up hopefully uh, next month. And uh, then I want to talk about some other bits and pieces on that as well, uh, around how the software's working, how power management's working, etc. In fact, I was having a little bit of a debate with a guy on uh, around uh, the comments on my YouTube channel because actually power management and actually how we get battery power things to last a long time is something that I'll, I know a lot of us in the community are interested in. Um, I've also talked about this DF Robots uh, SN0500 aggregate sensor. So this gives you temperature, atmospheric pressure, uh, humidity, uh, light, luminous levels, and UV. Uh, it's quite a, a nice little composite sensor. And though it isn't targeted really against the Pico because they don't produce software for the Pico, but you can easily use it from the Pico. And I'll show you how in that video. Um, that's that's worth a look. That that one only went out Thursday. Not been great its view rate on that one. So um, please do go and look at it. It I th it was a lot of work, and I'd love you to see it. But those those are the videos that I've been working on, and the projects that have really 
out there at the moment. The couple of things coming up um, that you might want to know about and just pencil into the back of your head to keep an eye, eye, eye out for. So um, first of all is I've updated my framework and working with micro ROS so that I could actually run that on the Pico 2. So I'll look at how I can actually get my uh, robot arm to actually work through micro ROS on the Pico 2. The reason I want to do that is I want to be able to push more of the workload down onto the Pico 2 and uh, the extra power and that mass coprocessor or mass capability on the Pico 2 make that really, really possible. I'm also going to do another one of the fireside chats and have a you know a guest on the channel. So um, Dan from Dan Make Things and his companion robot. Um, so they'll be coming up at the end of the month to uh, to chat about uh, uh, his uh, his journey and all of the uh, the wonderful stuff he's been doing. Um, it's a great channel. Go go check him out and uh, look out for that episode. And of course, as I've already said, we're going to do a Halloween special. Um, I wasn't originally going to do a Halloween special. Um, this one actually span out of another project. Um, and the project it span out of was Christmas. Because I'm busy, build, busy building Christmas. And Christmas is coming out early this year because uh, my Christmas build is an advent calendar. So that's going to be out the end of November. And yes, that's what it looks like on a breadboard. Now. Actually, it's not going to be on a breadboard. Um, I've gone from breadboard to prototype board and then decided that the prototype board's a bit on the complex side and gone to actually fabricated PCB. So probably coming out with two videos. Um, one, uh, looking at the actual concepts and what I'm building and how I've built it on the prototype board. And one looking at how I then convert in that and manufacturing it almost into a fabricated board and why I want to do that. So yeah, Christmas, it's here already and it's fun. And in fact, bits of it are sitting on the shelf behind me. So it's, it's, all, it's all happening. So those are the projects I'm working on. I'd love to see some of your stuff and know a little bit more about the projects you're doing. Are you doing any projects for Christmas? Why don't you tell me about it? Why don't we get either my November or uh, December live stream to actually showcase and sh um, show some of your stuff and some of the great projects that I know you guys must be working on. Uh, let me know, you know, get in touch, DM me somewhere, um, or drop me an email, uh, whatever you need to do. My uh, contact details are always on the end of the uh, YouTube uh, descriptions. Uh, let me know and we can make sure that you get a mention and we get to see your projects. And I'd love that. Um, so just before we go into stuff about my channel, the other thing I wanted to briefly say and the other video I want to briefly just push a little bit is my uh, Dyslexia and Me video. So I talk a little, I, I have talked uh, once a year or so a little bit about greater diversity. It's difficult showing diversity when there's just one of you uh, on the channel because your diversity of one is, is not significant. But there are things uh, in my neurodiversity and myself that I think are important. Uh, there are other diversity areas as well that are important. So I wanted to share diversity a little bit with the channel and talk a little bit about dyslexia and my experience of dyslexia in the workspace. So. If you're interested, please go and look at that video. Um, it was probably one of the hardest videos I've done, even though it actually is only me talking to camera. It's not got any builds, it's not got any of that, but it's that emotional ride, which is always harder to do. Go, go check it out, guys. So let's talk about the channel. So this is the section where I tell you what my broadcast schedule is and what we're up to and where things are going. Um, a bit more of an inside view of what's going on and stuff. So broadcasts are continuing with my full blog on a Thursday, always uh, two o'clock London time. It's been BST, we're coming up to the end of the month, so it will jump into GMT, I guess. Um, then I'm putting, continuing to put out the summary of that video on the following Tuesday. 
uh, which is somewhere around three minutes if I can get it to three minutes. Sundays has become the live stream and it used to be shorts day, um, but it's now, well, it's now sort of whatever I can get out that I think actually is going to add value and I think people would like. So I, I'm jumping around a little bit on what I'm doing on Sundays. So for instance, next Sunday is going to be the Halloween special episode. So it's all sort of stuff. And there's also a few reels that I've been producing that I'm using for the other social media that I've also pushed to YouTube. Though I was expecting them all to end up in the shorts category, but they're not. So I've done something wrong and I'm not quite sure I know well. I'll have to have a look at that, of what's going on. My automation software isn't working as I, as I hoped. I, I guess the, the big news on my channel and the big thank you to all of you guys um, is for subscriber base and to say thank you very much. We now have 4,000 subscribers. I can't believe there are 4,000 of you out there uh, listening to me. Um, thank you very much uh, for, for watching and for listening uh, and being part of the journey. Um, it's great and um, I'm, I'm bold, bold over that they, there were even 4,000. I was bold over when there was 400. Uh, 4,000 is credible, so all good stuff and, and that. Of course, YouTube are pushing me to look at something slightly different in terms of metrics. Um, YouTube's metric that they're really interested in me focusing on is this thing called uh, watch hours. Uh, and they really want to focus on how many watch hours you're getting in the last 365 days. Uh, and they have a magic target that they want you to get to um, when they become uh, you become a partner and get access to uh, all of their big toys. And that's when you hit 4,000 hours of public watch hours in a year. And as you can see, according to analytics from uh, YouTube, I'm, I'm actually there. Um, public watch hours uh, of main videos appears to be over 4,000 hours. But actually it's not because uh, YouTube publish another version of that, which is their validated version, uh, where they remove and, and, and massage the figures in some way that I don't entirely understand. Um, and uh, that, that means that actually we're still under that number and I still haven't managed it. Um, in, fact, in fact, the distance between that and the analytics figures growing, which is kind of concerning really. It started at the end of August at 200 on my analysis here. Uh, it's ended up um, this week at uh, 300 different hours of difference. That's a lot, um, I, and I don't know, that's 7%. That's a massive amount, but um, never mind. Look, I, my focus has got to be in, you know, can I close that gap? How do I push us up there? And I think really I, the way I do that is by focusing on producing content that I think you'll like and con which is generally content that I think I'd like. So it's, it's stuff that I think adds value, uh, is useful to the community and has some fun and worthwhile content in it to watch. And that's where we're gonna go. And that's what I, I you know, will keep focusing on. Um, and hopefully that will get me to that, that magic 4,000 hours number. But anyway, what we have got already on the, on the channel, and thank you very much for using it, is the th super thanks button, which is below the video, which is your opportunity to be able to give me cash tips by, you know, uh, and that's money that I'm then going to save up and put towards getting me to go to open source in San Francisco next year, which is a conference which includes uh, developer and developer ecosystem and embedded systems and a lot of Pico and RP2040 and RP2350 content. And I'd really appreciate your help in getting me there if I can. And of course, I'd love to meet loads of you in person there if we can as well. So that's what I'm trying to do. Please use the button if you, if you feel um, I've added value to you. Um, I'd appreciate uh, every, uh, every dime, you know, a coffee, um, a, a virtual lunch, all, all good money, and I will put it all towards that open source conference. And keep an eye out for me across the other social streams as well. Um, I do publish across all of them. Possibly it's the similar stuff across all of them, though um, I 
I'm more likely to reply and more likely to put special content onto Instagram and LinkedIn. Uh, they tend to be the more um, excite, more closer to me sort of channels than the others, but uh, they're there. Um, please do uh, follow me uh, across the other channels too. And remember, I've got my Udemy courses out there. Uh, this is, you know, part, what, part of what funds this work and allows me to do this stuff is uh, the revenue I get from those courses. So everything from, you know, getting started on, on your Pico journey to, you know, building some ex little tiny fun projects to working with more serious frameworks like FreeRTOS, um, IoT and web services. And I've updated the introduction course to include the new VS Code Pico extension, finally, and uh, cover the SDK 200 and the RP2350 and talk about how all of those can be used. Um, so that's there as well. And to celebrate that and indeed reaching 4,000 subscribers, I've got those courses on sale at the moment. And you can find a link to or you can find on my post on YouTube the vouchers for uh, um, uh, that sale. So uh, go, go enjoy that. Go buy what stuff if you can. So I've got one, lie, um, one Q and A that I've had in advance, and uh, no live questions that I can see on the chat at the moment. You're all being really quiet this week, guys. Um, which is, it's fine. It's up to you. Um, but love to know what's going in your heads. So the one live question I have this week is around video playback from the MSP2401, which is uh, this screen that uh, we talked about and I sort of showed a few times. Um, and really the question there is, can we actually play video to it? Because I failed in that video to be able to do that. And uh, I was going to explain a little bit more about why did I fail and could we get around those problems? So generally there are a few areas where this failed to be able to do video. I mean, one of the first reasons is I just couldn't pull data fast enough off the SD card. I'm reading the SD card on this via SPI and um, that's only uh, a single serial interface. I just didn't seem to get enough data throughput from the SD cards to be able to do it. Uh, there is another interface to SD cards, a more modern one, where there are you run out across four bits, and I think you could get, probably get closer to the required throughput. So that would be one option, but it would be a complete redesign of this because we're using this screen, which already has this SPI interface to the SD card underneath that. So, sort of, you know, you'd need a completely different SD card reader to be able to add that into it. Uh, the second challenge into this, I think, is the PNG decoding. Now, PNG decoding is a relatively amount, uh, large amount of work for the processor and for something like an RP2040. So if we upgrade it to an RP2350, then I think we have, a, you know, three, two or three times the Intel mass uh, calculation speeds, which I think would help significantly in the decoding speed and getting yourself to that. Um, you might be able to get there actually faster. Or the, other, well, the other part of that, I think, actually, is where you're pushing the data from. Because of the allow, amount of RAM available to me on an RP2040, I wasn't able to com create a complete um, frame buffer for the display. So I'm actually pushing the tech image out to the display a line at a time, which you can see because you can see it drawing a line at a time down there. Now, you could push out the whole image if we had more RAM. And one place you could get more RAM is if you upgraded to an RP2350. So at that point, if we can actually uh, decode the whole, uh, a whole screen at a time and then send the whole screen at a time down to, to the display, I think that's improving it. You could then do that by using DMA to do the send while the processor is starting to decode the next frame. So that, again, I think would really significantly help. Um, 
you know, and at the end of the day, you know, if this really doesn't work like that or quite as well as we would like, there are other options. Why not just store all of the frames pre-decoded in the 16-bit color format required for the dis displays directly in flash RAM? And if we used a board that had a lot more RAM, like um, the Pico 2 Plus from Pimeroni, which has got 16 meg of RAM, then actually I could probably can hold a nice bit of video in there and then I could push that directly to the, to the display and I'm sure I could get um, that to be a viable video playback directly on the display. So there's quite a lot of opportunities and quite a lot of ways you could push that project to actually get it to a point where you're actually doing video display uh, on these displays. Um, well, that, that's my view anyway. I think there's, there's, there's certainly a lot, of, a lot more research that needs to happen. Um, what do you think? Has anyone actually tried it? Um, uh, anyone wants to try it? Let me know. Um, I'd love to, to hear from you guys. Any questions from the community? It doesn't look like it. It looks like we're going to have a very quiet day, um, which is fine by me. So um, that's the questions I had for this week, and it was uh, great to answer them. Of course, when people ask questions on any of my videos, I always try and answer if I can. Um, not every art question can I answer, but you know, I'll give you some pointers and some suggestions uh, and we can go from there. And hopefully those are useful. So thank you very much for joining me today. It's been another exciting uh, live stream and bit of fun. I'll do another live stream in November. I'd love to have, hear a little bit more about you and your questions and your builds and projects that we could talk about and get you involved in it. And perhaps, you know, that November or December live stream, let's show, do some Christmas show and tell of your projects. Let me know what you've built and uh, please message me uh, or drop me an email and we can see if I can get that on the channel and that would be fabulous. Please like and please subscribe and uh, stay involved. And until the next time, keep tinkering. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, guys.